Welcome to the New Grounds Podcast. Today's episode hosted by Voices by Corey. Welcome to a brand new episode of the New Browns Podcast. I am your host for the night, Voices by Corey, and I am joined by two of my really good buddies. We got Nick Senny and Josh Ditton. They are two voice actors who have made a, a, a name for themselves on New Grounds, and I am really excited to have them on because we have been trying to get these two fuckers on for so long. And it's all thanks to uh, the one boy who lives across the pond, and that is... Josh, <laughs> and uh, thank you, boy. Yeah, he uh, he lives out in London, so it's a little bit early in the morning for him. So if he falls <laughs> asleep at all, don't be surprised. Um, yeah, like we we already had to wake him up a few times. But uh, <laughs> how you doing, boys? I'm 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 really excited for tonight. Um, it, this is actually the first time we've had the chance to. No, 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 it's not. We we've talked together on um. On the separate occasions, occasionally yeah, like here the, and there. Yeah. But earlier today, like just when like Josh woke up at like one AM, <laughs> I talked to him for the first time and I got to hear his like his his sultry voice. Yeah. That's like his like his his sexy voice at one AM, especially with the <laughs> accent. So it's just it's it's kinda nice. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Nick. gentlemen. <laughs> so yeah, like I said, we've been trying to get you guys on uh the show for quite some time, mainly because the three of us, especially, we have been trying to, you know, boost the presence of voice actors on Newgrounds, and like, <laughs> and yes. and you know, like we we've been, you know, we try to do as much as we possibly yes. can to put content out there and bring some more attention to the craft and what it is, and you know, that's ultimately one of the main reasons why I put together the the voice acting collaboration, and you two have helped me out a ton this. You know, for this year's rendition, especially you, Nick, you've been basically the captain of the fucking thing, <laughs> and it's amazing. I fucking nah, love it. Come on, dude. Like, he, he's he's been putting reminders together. He's fucking yeah. yelling at people. You know, cracking that whip, and it's been amazing. <laughs> it's trying oh, to learn how to use yeah. like the Discord, like weird bots that exist out there, <laughs> to not make sure that I'm like sending out like weird like like pills to people online with like weird links or something like that. I'm, af- I'm afraid I'm going to mess something up, but so far it's worked out. Yeah. As long as we haven't had any, uh, you know, killing robots go out to people's homes and all that stuff, it's been good. <laughs> so before we really get started and dive into this episode, I want you guys to go ahead and introduce yourselves, give a little bit of background information and we'll go from there. So who wants to talk first? Uh, I don't mind. <laughs> Go ahead, talk, Josh. Hi, I'm. I'm. Uh, hello, I'm Josh, uh, and I'm tired. <laughs> 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 nah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm Josh. I mean, some people know me, some people don't. For those of you who don't know me, um, I am 29. I'm five foot nine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nah. Um, I got into voice Police acting. Police profile. I think <laughs> brown eyes, brown hair. Um, but yeah, no, I I kind of you know, got into voice acting through, um, I think Corey, me, you and I, we both worked on that, um, what was it called? Uh, Space Raiders in Space. Yeah, I? that's initially how you I and think, I, that, yeah, I think that's how yeah, you and I initially met, through Space Raiders in Space. That was my first, like, proper project, like, proper project where I'm on board and I get, you know, and they let us have a bit of freeway with that as well. They let us choose kind of how we wanted to structure the characters and stuff you know yeah and i think it was great i mean i I remember i remember going in there thinking i was the only voice actor they, that they had on the project like male voice actor and they're like oh we have another guy um called Corey, and we'll just add you two into the chat and i was like he's my enemy <laughs> this is my enemy <laughs> guy named Corey. they have someone else <laughs> yeah i was like they have someone else on this project <clears throat> and then I went in the chat just waiting to unload and say how much i hate you yeah for being on the same project <laughs> as me i come in there you're like Hi, I'm Corey. And I was like, oh, I love him. I love him. <laughs> and then from then on, wasn't it? We were just like, <laughs> we were just like bros, man, from, you know, other mothers from that point on pretty much, aren't we? Yeah, like that. But, um, I remember the, <clears throat> the first time we actually had that chat. I think we actually hopped on a live call with uh, Lauren and, uh, yeah, you and I, we, we kept chatting after that. And you're like, 
mate, I, I love your voice. Your voice is so, it's so beautiful. I, I love it so much. And I'm like, I hate Teach yours. You <laughs> sound like you're from fucking London. It's gross. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty much how it's been. That's pretty much how it's been for two years. <laughs> that's how it's been for a while now. It's just like, you fucking Brit. Oh, you fucking Yankee. Fuck you. <laughs> that's literally 99% of the conversations we have in it. Even pretty if we're much, not even yeah. online, I've just sent you a message. You're right, you Yank. Just making fun of like, <laughs> you, you having like tea and crumpets or something like that as much as we possibly can. Just throwing your way. Like earlier, yeah. you know, uh, Josh is telling us, he goes, you know, I'm taking a nap and um, I've got my coffee ready. And yes, you fucking racist. I We don't just drink tea out here. We drink coffee as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, be, exactly. be, before we move on to uh, Nick's introduction, like one of the things that we wanted to do um, tonight is actually play the demos, uh, some of the, the, the voice demos for Nick and Josh, just so you can see what uh, they have to offer and just to show how talented these guys are, because in my opinion, they've proven it already on Newgrounds that they're, you know, easily some of the top voice actors on the site. So what we're going to do real quick is just play Josh's demo and then we'll go right into uh, uh, Nick's introduction as well. Hey there, I'm Mordecai Resner, but you can call me Morty. Just one second. Ah! See, another job down. If you have any mechanical needs, you come and see me. I see you bought me the magic book of spells. Did you also bring the rum? No? Now, bother! I'll just magic up a bottle then. <laughs> okay, sit down, sit down. We have much to do if we are to close this portal. Did they not show up because of me? Why don't they like me? What's wrong? What's wrong with me? Why am I so different? Your friend over there seems to be staring at me. <laughs> Could you head over there and tell him to look away before I rip out his eyes and feed them to my dogs? You think I'm gonna stand by and let you take over this planet? Not on my watch! Pretty good with that sword. But if we keep fighting like this, that thing's gonna take off. And if it does, we're both dead. Yeah, you better not be causing any trouble around here, or you're gonna have to answer to the thorn. Oh, those boys are back in the yard again. Give me my shotgun before they steal my turnips. Oh no, there she is. You gotta hide me. You have to hide me. She can't see me like this. Oh no. Untie that boy. I wanna see how far he gets before my bullet catches him. <laughs> That's a big blade you got there. Are you brave enough to use it on me? Oh God almighty. Surely we can come to some sort of agreement. Oh, I'm sure there's a few things you can do to persuade him. Have you shown him your sword? Grab me my sword. That's so good, Grab man. me my sword! Hand me my sword, donkey! Grab me my sword! <laughs> <laughs> See, guys, brilliant, brilliant voice actor. Hey, I'm, I'm really glad to, you know, I have the opportunity to call him my friend and work with him on a bunch of uh, different projects so far. So let's move on to the next voice actor uh, that we have here tonight, of course, is Mr. Nick Sandy. You guys know him. He's been on the show two times so far, and each time he's been absolutely hilarious. Nick, uh, go ahead and give the audience a little bit of info about yourself. Yeah, sure, no problem. So I am, I believe, 24 now. i lose losing count. But uh, <laughs> I, if I'm following the same realm as Josh here, I think I'm like 5'10 or so, but like my hair makes me like have an additional like five inches probably. <laughs> my mother always tells me to cut it. It's so poofy. And, uh, you know... It really is kind of poofy, to be honest, and I, I I like that aspect about it. I think I think that's my my best uh my best quality about myself. But I, I've been doing different things throughout my life in terms of like audio or visual work, and I've always just kind of had an interest in either. I'm not really doing animation too much, but I've had an interest in animation when I was younger. Had an interest in obviously cartoons and different voices that individuals do, and also kind of just like sound design and the way that that works out. So as I was growing older. I got involved in my theater when I was in high school. I ended up working the soundboard for that. In college, I ended up actually becoming the head manager of our radio station. And then as a result of that, after that, I just decided, okay, I kind of want to do this as much as I possibly can after I graduate. So I decided to actually jump into doing voice acting, not full-time, just on the side as a part-time thing. What I'm doing right now is kind of more so trying to establish myself in the different platforms, trying to you know establish a voice for myself and trying to like just establish an identity in general yeah absolutely kind of where i am right now yeah and and you know you have already 
like I said, both of you guys have already proven that you're some of the best voice actors on Newgrounds. Um, last Halloween with the voice acting competition, Nick actually won the damn thing, and Nick placed third. Uh, I'm sorry, and Josh placed third. And both their entries were fantastic. And like I said, they, they've appeared in quite a few animations so far. And, you know, they were a big help in the first uh, voice, actor, uh, voice acting collaboration. And they've put together some of their own audio skits uh, that we're going to be talking about tonight. You know, that's actually where you and I first met, Nick. It was, um, you know, on the forums for the voice acting collaboration. Yeah. You were the first person that actually reached out to me. So... If it wasn't for you, this thing probably wouldn't have even happened. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, man, of course, absolutely. I love, I love to be a part of it. That's kind of like when I was first starting out. I realized I was like, I've always, you know, been a part of Newgrounds in the sense of just like always following it. I know all the different characters, the different tunes, the different individuals that are involved in it, just all the different personalities. But I actually never really even had a profile, nor did I ever really upload anything throughout my entire year of my like different years of my life. So I decided after I graduated, I was like, I kind of want to just like take a stand to actually do something. And mm. sometimes I have those moments in my life where I'm like, okay, I got to do something now or else nothing's going to happen. I got to take the action first. Yes. So that's what I did is I, you know, I, I created an account. I jumped in. I did some auditions here and there. But as soon as I saw that one, I was like, I'm going to jump on this because I feel as though this is going to be a particularly very helpful contact. He knows he has very a huge experience. I've seen Corey like throughout all the different forums in there as well. Whenever I auditioned for something, I saw that he talked in there as well. And I was like, if I didn't get the part, it probably went to him because that dude was so talented. And then, you know, seeing that final, you know, oh, and anybody want to work with me? I was like, absolutely. I want to collab with this guy. So this is where I am today. And yeah. and like I, said, I am extremely lucky, lucky to have you guys on as managers for the 21 uh, rendition because it's going to be bigger than it was the first time around. We're going to have 30, at least 30 skits lined up, I think, this time. Two parts, and like I said, Nick has been basically the showrunner and handling everything on the forefront, which has been nice because it was kind of just me throughout the first, uh, it, pretty much throughout the first three quarters of <laughs> the first one, and then Nick jumped on for the last quarter and helped me finalize everything. So it's nice to have. Yeah, I still find find that crazy that you did that on your own for dude, that long. <laughs> um, dude, I, it, it was so hard juggling everything, and yeah. you know. It got to the point where I'm like I need to get this thing out, and I, yeah. I knew Nick was very talented with sound editing, uh, just sound design in general. I said, "Dude, do you want to help me with these?" He goes, "Absolutely," and he put together I think what ten, like put together ten of the remaining skits that we had to do. Like you, you mm. took on a, a shit ton of them, and it, it was a, a tremendous. I think help. I did it in like a week or two. Oh was yeah, that, dude. Like, <laughs> I was like, I just want to get this you, done. You powered through <laughs> it, and and just yeah. just so you guys can hear the type of. You know, voice actor and sound design extraordinaire. This guy's this guy is. We're gonna play his demo here real quick. So here is Nick Senny's voice demo. We gotta come up with new movie ideas, or we'll go broke. Kid. Yes, uh, sir. Not any good ideas. Oh, what about that? You are What do we do? I'll tell you what we do. We fire back. What? Fire back. <laughs> That's that sorry oh, lad God, up! Hellman! 30 God. degrees starboard! Right, Get sir. us closer! Oh, pirate movies have been overdone! So, uh, sorry! Give sorry. me something else, champ! Uh, okay, uh, okay. We need video evidence of this, man. Get closer! Okay. Uh, I'll try, sir. Uh oh, God! I gotta get a better angle of this. Uh, I can almost see it. You're, you're almost there. <laughs> it seems like we have a best problem. Get rid of him. Oh, nah, horror doesn't sell. Uh, perhaps this? It's me, Giggles the Clown. Everybody loves me, especially my father. How can I expect to make anyone laugh if I can't even bring myself to be happy? I don't need any of your existential nonsense, Giggles. Get the hell out of my office. You're a disappointment. I just wanted to make you happy, Dad. <laughs> it's so sad, good, man. Sad world. It's so sad, but it's so good. See, I, I, I love your unique take on a voice demo reel. It, you know, a lot of people would say, eh, you do your best work and just give the best spots. 
Well, you also want to try to show some creativity in it too, and you brought a new perspective to yours, and I and I really liked it. You know, it was basically yeah. I f- yeah, no, yeah. You you explain it better because <laughs> you put it together. Go ahead. I find as though I don't know if it's like a schizophrenic thing, like a schizophrenic Senny type situation, <laughs> but I find that I talk to myself a lot, and even in like my podcast, we'll talk about later. Um, I, I I pretty much am always just talking to myself or yelling at myself and various different voices. And I've always done it to myself and in the car or when I'm, you know, just at home and when no one's home, usually, hopefully. <laughs> Otherwise, my uh, my family would be a little bit upset. But uh, I, know I found pain. as though, like, why not, why not establish that idea of, like, what I can do in terms of having a conversation, even with myself, to show that availability. So I decided that rather than having a distinct voice for each different part of a skit, I would do all the voices for a given skit and establish small little pieces of each little area. Mm. And then in the end, everything came together as a whole because, you know, the guy in the beginning is the 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 nerd's father. And, you know, obviously <laughs> it's showing the different op- different areas he's trying to go into, the different avenues. And I also like to expose as well sometimes my my own insecurities in my in my work because otherwise, uh, you know, I don't want to leave it all just uh you know, down low inside of myself, like to, you know, express it out a tiny bit. Yeah, some, some, yeah, sometimes your work is the best way to, you know, express certain things that you don't feel like you can normally talk about. So I, yeah. it's, and like your creative side, like everything creative wise that you put together is just in a good way. It's out there and it's so unique in a way that, you know, something that you haven't really heard in quite some time, like, especially with, with, uh, the open door policy podcast, which we're going to talk about. It is prob- yeah, it is yeah. so out mm-hmm. there and it is so fucking funny. If you guys haven't heard it yet, um, we'll, we'll make sure to link uh, episode one of the podcast. Um, it is, it's one of the funnier podcasts I've heard in a long time. And there's four episodes out right now, but before we dive into um, the audio skits that we want to plug tonight for Nick and Josh, we're going to talk a little bit about um, the little, acting trope that we call ourselves <laughs> let's talk let's tell everybody what the hell Cerberus is all about because you know we you know we plugged it and some people are like what what, what the hell is Cerberus <laughs> so who are these who guys are these? I, I saw like in the chat they're like what reacting with like angry rem- like they're like, who, who who are these people in the first place but <laughs> hopefully down the line you might know who we are yeah, of course. that's the whole point we're trying to make that establishment yeah. because you know, Newgrounds has been around for quite some time now, and a lot of individuals have made their way in either the voice acting scene, animating scene, etc. We're just trying to make sure that it's a, a playground for everyone, you know, everything by everyone. So we're just trying to continually add into the voice acting aspect. We have, obviously, we have, like, the animation and, like, movie portal. We have the art portal, and we have the audio portal. But sometimes the music in the audio portal you know, obviously takes up a lot of the area, which is fantastic. You couldn't imagine how many people are so talented Absolutely, yeah. in that avenue. But sometimes the the voice acting aspect might not get as much attention or individuals that try to get some attention might kind of be not necessarily pushed to the sidelines, but might get, you know, overlooked attack. Yeah. I mean, so we know that first time, don't we, really? A little bit. Yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> Go ahead, you, you, you can share. You can share, Josh. No, I'm not going to. Yeah, I, <laughs> it's okay. It, it, it's, you can share. Yeah, it's true. It does get a bit overlooked, you know. And um, I think that what we're doing is combining our strengths and kind of, as a team, trying to get us out there. I think that this is one of the great things about us being well. From me being the other side of the of the world is that um, one of us is always doing work on it. You know. But if, when I'm sleeping, I wake up. You guys are sending me links to things, you know. Exactly. Oh, look, you, you, this is good. Yeah, yeah. And and the same the other way around as well. So we're not missing anything, really. We're kind of filling each other in. Um, <clears throat> and I think if you're doing something like this as well, something as big and, and something that you feel passionate about, that you really want to put out there, it's great to ha- have <clears throat> a team that can support you as well. Because there are a lot of times when I wake up and I'm thinking, oh, I really can't be bothered today. And then, you know, I just get like uh, a message of encouragement from you guys or whatever, you know, and this is the best thing about Nick doing this, um, this collab with us as well, is that he constantly keeps us updated. Yeah. Have you guys done this? Have you guys done that? Have you guys done this? And I think you really... I feel like a mother. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, guys. yeah, exactly. I mean, sometimes I feel guys, like I'm in trouble, <laughs> but it's good because it kind of keeps your foot down and it keeps us moving forward. And I think if you're doing something like that on your own, it's easy to get sidetracked and it's easy to fall out and just kind of drop it, you know. But when you've got a team of people that all have the same sort of mindset that can kind of push each other, it's it, it, it's great. 
So <clears throat> that's kind of what Cerberus is. We kind of want to have something that all of us, you know, contribute to that can, you know, help us. So there's constantly someone working on it at, at any one time, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Like that's it's an endless cycle. Yeah, like that. Yeah. That was one exactly. of the, you know, it, for those who, who know my background with voice acting, I stepped away for a couple of years and came back in 2019. And I think I, I met you guys almost right away or, or like towards the end of 2019 is when I got mm -hmm. to meet you guys. And one of the big yeah. things that lacked the first time uh, when I attempted voice acting was the lack of a support system. You know, I had people in my, you know, my close circle of family and friends who were like, <laughs> what the hell's the matter? Like, dude, come on. It's like, you can do voices. Oh, yeah. It, it's fun. It's funny that you can do voices, but you won't be able to make a career out of it. So, you know, having, yeah. you know, I got to meet you guys and, you know, I, I initiated the private chat that we have going on at all times. And, you know, every single day I was like, Hey, what do you guys think about this audition? Dude, that sounds great. Hey, you know, try do it this way. Oh yeah, that sounds way better. Oh yeah, so you you had it's it's nice having, you know, people with the right mindset too, you know, encouraging you yes. and pushing you to achieve your goals, you know, especially in a competitive field such as voice acting. You know, I I, I do like to compare it to, you know, professional sports. You know, you have everyone trying to it, it goes with, you know, with game development, you know, composing and animation too. You have a bunch of people trying to like trying their hand at a craft that is, you know, can be very difficult at times. And you have the pros up there who are doing it every single day and just have authority over everyone. And you're basically clawing and scratching to get to that level with those pros. But having people there with you, pushing you while you push them, helping each other achieve their goals, it's awesome. And that's one of the reasons why we did create Cerberus was so we can continue that aspect of pushing ourselves to create content um yeah. to push our careers further and also help push the careers of other people too like i i don't think i've talked about it with you guys yet but i do want to make the you know the 21 uh edition of the voice acting collaboration a, a cerberus production simply because yeah. you know i brought you guys on as managers um so it you know our hands are all over it and we're you know the whole reason why oh, i started that collaboration was to get voice actors new and veteran you know everyone a chance to try their hand at voice acting so you know it's you two have become some of my closest friends you know even though we really haven't even met yet just via chatting <laughs> on discord and voice chat you know i i have a, a close bond with you guys simply because you care about my career as much as i career uh, i care about your careers and it, it's a special thing that we have with with cerberus yeah I'm gonna definitely, start. Definitely. I'm gonna start crying. <laughs> I I am crying. <laughs> I can no, it, it, I can hear it in your voice. Literally, <laughs> you're crying because your your legs are burning from standing up in your booth. That's the real issue. <laughs> so I, I I do want to talk a little bit more about voice acting. Um, you know that's that's gonna be the theme tonight, guys. If you're not <laughs> interested in voice acting, you're you're more than welcome to do? leave. But we do have uh, but Nick and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nick and Josh are they're, they're well versed and you know they are extremely talented at what they do. So, you know, when it comes to voice acting in general, how did you guys initially make that decision to get into it? You know, a lot of people are just like, uh, you know, I, I I tried acting, you know, but it was my niche. I tried voice acting instead, and that was great. What did you guys do to initially make that jump into voice acting? <laughs> you just said exactly what I did. That's why I said it. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said it. <laughs> yeah, so basically, yeah, yeah. So originally, I, I wanted to get into acting. I, I love performing. It's funny. This is so funny. Um, I love performing, but when I'm comfortable, if that makes sense. Like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm great at acting. I can really come alive when I'm around people You're that naked. I feel comfortable oh, with, sorry. you know? Mm. I, I, wait, what did you say? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> yeah. Go no, on, no. come on. <laughs> so, so basically, so I went. I, I used to go to um, uh, what do you call casting calls and stuff. You know, like out the actually acting, going to places and actually doing um, and trying to get roles in TV shows and you know just fan made stuff and whatever. And I just, I, I felt like it was just taking too much of my time having to travel to all of these different places and do these things. And then when I get there, I get so nervous that 
all the stuff I'd rehearsed, it was just hard to actually do that in front of someone, you know? So obviously after having a child as well, after having a kid, I got a two year old son. After having a son, um, I thought, you know, how can I express myself? <laughs> it's funny. I can express myself without actually having to go out and travel to all these different places. So it takes me out of the house and without feeling, um, you know, uncomfortable doing it in front of people as well. Voice act, um, acting. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> Then I found voice acting, you know, I, I watched a lot of animes, I, you know, because when I growing up, I used to love animes, you know, and the classics, Dragon Ball Z and stuff, and um, Naruto, and I play games pretty much since I was born, uh, so then I, I realized, you know, I, I got into learning who the voice actors were for all the different things, you know, Troy Baker and Nolan North, the voice actors, yeah. who, uh, you know, the, cla- <laughs> the classics, love them, absolutely love them, Ro- Roger Craig Smith, I knew that you wouldn't let me forget that one, uh, Duh. Corey, you love Roger Craig Smith. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so then I started, you know, I put, I put a lot of money into building my own little booth. Uh, I got a laptop, a microphone and everything. And I started my hand in voice acting. And I realized when I'm in my own little space, uh, and I'm auditioning for these things from home without having to travel anywhere, I'm actually, I can express myself a lot better, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. And then gradually, obviously you do live auditions and stuff. And then that kind of brings you out of that little bubble. So it's slowly, but surely I'm becoming much more comfortable you know, doing things like this in front of people, you know? Does that make, oh, does that man, make sense? Oh, man, dude, the live audition piece or just, like, in general doing, the, like, the live recording with a director is yeah. just it's the most nerve-wracking thing to me. Oh, like, yeah. Currently, right now, I'm nervous being here, and, but <laughs> also that, just knowing that, like, your opportunity could be ripped away from you at any second is just, like, the most frightening thing. It's true. You can be yeah. like, four score, thank you, uh, we... You know, it, thank you for coming in today. But All right, bye, I, Max. I just drove an hour to talk for a second. Yep, you, thank you for coming. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, it's, I feel it's, it's the fear of, of 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 embarrassing yourself. I think that's the main fear for me is embarrassing myself because I, I kind of have an out of body experience when I'm performing in front of someone. I'm looking at me from their point of view and thinking. One idiot. <laughs> do, do, do you get what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Th- literally, that's what it is. Like I kick, like, like I put myself down all the time, and it and it. Uh, makes my performance crap <laughs> you know just thinking that way so it's easier for me to just send auditions out from here in my own space yeah uh and then if it's bad they can email me <laughs> i don't have to see them <laughs> do you know what i mean <laughs> i remember like like just uh, Nick just said when you go for a live audition i remember my first live audition i was shaking man i was like oh no oh no even though they can't see me it's just like it was so awkward man it was like one of the most awkward things ever but now i've done so many of them that i'm, I'm you know i'm comfortable Especially with you guys. I mean, Nick, uh, we've been speaking for a while, and it's like as soon as we went on the um, the mic, it's like we knew each other. I mean, we did know each other, but I mean, it was you know. Yeah, but no, that was that was what I thought was pretty interesting too. Is that I just I talked to Josh for the first time in person, like through Mike, yeah. as opposed to like I've obviously like heard him through clips on like either like Snapchat or just other things. <laughs> But just yeah. today, I got to talk to him at literally two a.m., yeah. which just instantly <laughs> hit it off. So that's just a good. A good, I'm a know, good actor. Of what like. <laughs> I'm a good yeah, he's a good actor. actor. He's just he's just putting up a scene the entire time. He's just he's just that good at it to make it seem as though he likes me. So I really appreciate. I really I appreciate. Yeah, we it. hit it off, Nick. Yeah. <laughs> but um, in terms of kind of like my opinions and in terms of you know just the whole like voice acting scene in general, or kind of how I felt as though I kind of wanted to get involved is because throughout pretty much the entirety of my life. I felt as though I've just consumed media. Not exactly a good thing, but it's kind of like, I wouldn't say it's my talent, but I just love to just literally take in anything and everything that I possibly can. So that'd be either movies or you know television shows or just live events for certain things here and there or just you know life in general. For example, when I was in like school for gym class, granted, I had like asthma and I was a nerd. I wasn't necessarily <laughs> just like, lazy but i just kind of didn't i wasn't very sporty and i still am not today i still talk about um you know like actual sporting events and i say if like there's a baseball game on i'm like oh who are the phillies fighting tonight (laughs) instead of like who are they playing because i'm a big fan of professional wrestling that's that's my (laughs) avenue that i love and you can see where a little bit of some of my you know voice acting might have come from as well because People go up on stage, they go into the ring, they have that mic in their hand, and they're cutting promos. They're doing different voices, they're wearing weird costumes, and they're just characters of themselves. They're turning themselves, literally this is kind of the concept of just having a gimmick in wrestling, is that it's yourself times like 11, or just dialed up a lot more than you actually are as a human being. 
you just, you know, really putting your personality out there, but to its extremities. So that's kind of what I try to do with a lot of my work is I try to put myself in it and I try to see as though I can maybe like, oh, there's a little bit of Nick's personality there, et cetera, et cetera. I am very Jersey and Philly. I am from, <laughs> I am from uh, uh, Pennsylvania. Yes, you are correct. <laughs> Stan Pie in the chat. Yes. Water, 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 water. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> but um, I, I, I do want to also just like kind of mention that like I, in, in the sense of just consuming media, a lot of individuals actually also say in the voice acting community, what I've learned is that <clears throat> apparently a, a great way to actually kind of really get the craft and understand it to the greatest extent might not even be so much from like like watching and consuming cartoons as much as it is like watching movies. Yeah. Because you get to see people's experiences, you get to see people's traumas, you get to see their faces and their facial reactions. Because too, as probably Josh or Corey can you know attest to, when you're behind the mic, you're making weird faces, you're making <laughs> weird movements, you're taking what you have and you're bringing it to reality. So if you're in a crying scene, you better be crying behind the camera as 100%. well. Yeah. You're not just putting up a voice yeah, the entire yeah, yeah. time. Yeah. It would but definitely then kind show. Of the last thing, yeah, exactly. And the, just the last thing that I kind of wanted to just state too, in terms of at least myself, is that in terms of acting, uh, it's not exactly a, a good way to think about it for myself. But I've always felt as though I've never been entirely secure about who I am as an individual. So with acting, I've I've always loved Halloween because Halloween allows you to be somebody else, and that's what acting does for me. Yeah, I don't have to be me. I can be somebody else. I can put on a mask, and that's kind of what my little symbol represents in my icon. I have a mask with me the entire time. I have these masks. It's a weird little mask that I have, and I love it because it allows me to have that, that confidence. I put it on. I'm not myself. I can be anybody I want. So that's kind of where I am right now. Do you want to, that's why I do you want to tell the, the audience whose mask you're wearing in uh, the logo that we have? Yeah, yeah, okay, all right, sure, yeah. So I have this, I have this, I have this super creepy mask that I have. If anybody has seen pictures of it, I have it on my Twitter header. I have it in my profile right, right now. And um, so it, it's a, uh, it's a, okay, all right. Before I, I give it away, so y you know how like with, uh, I'm a big horror fan as well. You know, like Michael Myers. Yes. Did you know that the, you know the mask for Michael Myers is just a William Shatner mask yes. that's like colored white. Yes. Oh, Did wow. you happen to know yes. that? No, I didn't. So my didn't. mask is, of all the different individuals and characters you could think of, it's a super old Larry Fine from the Three <laughs> Stooges mask. But it's decrepit after years and years of just, like, rotting away in my grandmother's basement. <laughs> and I found it one time. And I, like, donned it on, and I was like, oh, this is awesome. And it actually kind of looks like my dad, too, <laughs> which made it even better. Because then I would like kind of wear it, and I would like spook out Cyclone Brightmire, my friend, and we would you know have a whole lot of fun with that. And then I managed to find somehow, I I, I found a, a a curly mask in my grandmother's basement. I was like, why do you have <laughs> Three Stooges masks all around everywhere? There there was no like there was no you know any other ones that there was no Mo, but I found the the curly and the Larry one. I was like, oh, this is awesome. And then since then, I've tried to you know just kind of get as many masks as I can, but it, that represents the many different voices that I try to attest to. I try to do different voices and wear different masks across the, uh, the different, you know, voice acting avenues. Yeah. It's definitely <laughs> unique. Uh, it, it's definitely you. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that, you know, that's it's great. It's, I like it. It's cool though, because, you know, I, I don't know about <laughs> you guys, but when I'm, you know, when I'm trying to create voices, you know, I, I try to pull from, you know, real life scenarios, you know, there, there's a couple of voices that I've created simply because of the people I've worked with, some of my past friends, uh, just family members. And, you know, it's, it, it's kind of like the same thing, you know, Nick is, it, Nick is basically pulling voices from, you know, um, the masks that, <laughs> that he, that he, uh, that he found in his grandma's, in his grandma's basement. But, you know, just also in general from, um, you know, from horror movies and, and, and basically everything else, you know? Inspirations are everywhere. There's so much, uh, you know, a lot of, vo okay, can you hear me, yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh, I never know if it disconnects. I, just, I never know. Um, a lot of the voices that I've done, um, I've actually, you know, obviously from watching cartoons and stuff growing up and animated, you get voices from them. Um, but a lot of it is from actually auditioning for things. I find that I uh, discover these new voices and new ways of saying things as I'm auditioning. So you're constantly learning. 
And I think one of the best things that you can do, if so, I'm, I'm answering some of the questions today. I think one of the best things that you can do if you want to get into voice acting is literally audition, audition, audition. Yeah. Everywhere, all the time. Because, you know, some people are, oh, you should take some time, uh, put some time aside for practice and you should audition here. Listen, auditioning is practicing too. Yes. Like, absolutely. I get, I got it most of my experience is. through auditioning, you know, and some sites as well, you can, uh, you can get, uh, you can hear people's auditions to what you're trying to go for. Yeah. And you can kind of work off of, um, if you don't know how great you are, how good you are, you want to look at the ones that are getting a lot of uh, people, you know, liking it and uh, the ones that actually do get the part. And then you can kind of go off and have a base for how far off you were from that voice that they wanted. Um, and then all that's learning as well, you know. Um, but yeah. Is that absolutely that, that's a really good point? And oh, I definitely, definitely feel that. Yeah. Like, like, one of the things that somebody told me a while ago was the job of voice acting is auditioning. You audition, you audition, you audition, you audition, you audition. That is voice acting. What's the icing on the cake is getting the role and getting to actually be a part of that project. That's all overtime. All the you know, just the, the daytime hours is you auditioning and honing your craft. When you do that, yeah. you know, that's that's the job in and of itself. Getting the role is overtime. That's when you get to have fun. That's when you get to enjoy yourself a little bit more. No job is easy. Putting in the time and effort to audition and get the role is the vast majority of what voice acting is. Yeah. I think <laughs> and I found... I, I found too that like voice acting and like projects in general are kind of like a vicious cycle as well because like you'll audition for things and you're constantly audition and maybe you get the role yeah and then you got to record for the role and then like it's going to be a matter of time before that comes out but you're like okay I'm going to go voice act for something else so maybe you get the role and you do that and you record it et cetera et cetera you just keep doing it and it's like you know over a couple of months you're like oh I'm not releasing anything like yeah. none of my projects are out because they're all works in progress. And then at the point in time where like everything that you auditioned for and that you recorded, it just happens that it always seems to like fall all at the same exact it's time. True. <laughs> so you have like you have like thirty different announcements in a span of like a week, and you're like, oh great, okay, all right. I'm so happy that this was finally done, and I'm able to show it to everybody. But it's like it's gonna get overshadowed by the thing I got to show tomorrow. <laughs> it's true. I I I have forgot. There there are a lot of notifications that come up like, oh, this is being released, or you get reminders from. Uh producers stuff and i'm like i forgot that i even <laughs> that i was even doing that like the other day i think uh, i think it was yesterday i asked you guys you had an update from that one i won't say who it is that one project that game project um oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and i was like disclosed yeah, information I, I forgot about it <laughs> i just completely forgot about it. i didn't even realize i was like oh we're actually all on this <laughs> he's like yeah, oh here's an right. update i was like wait hang on when was this <laughs> like, like did you guys get? Did you guys get the email? Yeah, yeah, did yeah. you guys check your email? Check, check your email. Your check email. Your email. <laughs> right, Josh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, check your yeah, email. That's, right. <laughs> that's so we, that's a little meme between us. We yeah, were we were always yeah. So this, I'll just explain it. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. We we would all audition for like roles on uh on projects, and they'll say, oh yeah, you know, if you're if you if you get the role, you get an email and whatever. So um, because we know that we've all auditioned for it. Uh, I started off this thing where I just, you know, in all caps, like, check your emails, check your emails. I just got like a confirmation and they go in their emails and there's nothing there because I'm lying. <laughs> <laughs> and I do it all the time Empty. and it gets them so worked up. It's so funny. <laughs> and now you've started doing it to me as well. But it, it, Well, there's times where you throw it right funny. back at you and you're like, oh, really? really? Oh, you motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dude, one of these days, I've done so many things with like one of my like best friends, the Cyclone Breitmeyer. I've like faked him out with so many different things. I've made fake Instagram accounts, fake emails. <laughs> like, for example, like there's a guy named, I made a fake guy named Beer Nuts who like happened to be like some like fat dude that was locked in a bathroom and he emailed like all of our friends. And everyone was like, who's Beer Nuts? And I was like, oh, I don't I don't know. I'm not sure who it is. <laughs> and they like literally just thought there's some like some heavy set like dude in the red speedo locked in the bathroom was sending out an email to them asking for help. <laughs> so the one fuck? of these days, I'm going to send an email, like a fake email out to you, Josh, to get you back after all the times <laughs> you've got us. Yeah, oh, that's so great. I'll be waiting for it. <laughs> I want to keep addressing um, you know, all the fun stuff that, you know, we've done in our careers. Um, and, and just what we have planned out for the future or what we've done in the past. And, and I feel like there's one thing we need to talk about briefly before we move on to the next portion of the show. And it does involve Josh. And I want to touch on the fact that you were a fucking YouTube star, you and your three brothers. 
go oh, into <laughs> no. go into the process <laughs> of the Ditton Brothers YouTube channel. <laughs> okay. Let's go. So it's actually the Dighton Brothers. Dighton. <laughs> Ditton Dighton Doyton. So back in 2009, I think it was, um, me and my other three brothers, we decided to make a YouTube channel. I think everyone was at the time, you know, YouTube was like big at, at the time and everyone was trying to jump on it. And we used to make like small little skits. I think they were between like one and three minutes. They weren't long, um, but it were all comedy. We have hundreds of videos. And I mean, within, I think it was in within three or six months, I think we got something like 30,000 subscribers. Um, and we kind of became, not, I wouldn't say famous, but we, you know, everyone in our area, and when we would go to London, people would notice us and stuff. This is a long time ago. This is back in 2009. So um, that's all died off now. <laughs> but um, this was back when I think we had just left school. Like my younger brothers were, they were young, so they always had free time. Um, I just left school. I was between leaving, I think I was 18 or 19. So I just left school. And it was between school and like your first job. So you always had that kind of free time because it's like part-time work. And um, yeah, so we... <laughs> We we made this YouTube channel and it got it got massive. We used to go to London to do to go to like the Google headquarters to explain kind of what our next videos would be with like the higher ups and stuff like that. And then it um <clears throat> it kind of died out, man. I mean, all of us, you know, all of Zach gets naked. No way, he's just seen the first one. He's always that one, man. He always sees the first one. He doesn't, so it's like clickbait, isn't it? <laughs> um but yeah, there's loads of there's loads of videos on there, man. For you, if you guys want to look at them, I mean they're rubbish now. There's so much better <laughs> content out now because it's all old and it's embarrassing. But um, yeah, but, so that's kind of I think that that kind of got me into having you know wanting to do acting and performing because we absolutely loved it. I think we did it for like three years. But um, you know, as we all got older, we all got you know proper jobs and girlfriends, so we can you know find the time to actually do it together anymore. And then we um. That doesn't sound right. You guys got girlfriends? <laughs> yeah, we've got girlfriends. <laughs> um, people, people have girlfriends. <laughs> they, they do. Yeah. That that was that one good? of the yeah. that was one of the things that I love though because I I know that you guys tried to have a, a resurgence of the channel a couple months ago, and you try yeah. you tried to incorporate your son into them, which was I thought really cool. Um, and I I really want to see more because you know the the whole. Uh, I think like one of the ongoing jokes for your original channel was like, uh, like, like you don't fuck with your younger brother cause he'll kick your fucking ass. And then you're yeah, trying that to, was it, it. That was like the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. And then you started transitioning it to like, don't fuck with my son. My son is the next generation. He's going to fuck you guys all up. <laughs> so it was really cool. Like, do, do you think that will, uh, you and the, you and your brothers will get back together and, and try to put some, <laughs> some more videos together? Like a yeah, so like I said, so the first lockdown happened, didn't it, over here? So yeah. we were all at home. None of us were working. So we had a bit of time to um, get really drunk. <laughs> no, we had a lot of, We had a lot of time to uh, make videos again. So I think we made two videos. It took so long, by the way. When you're younger and you have like a young mind, you have the time, you can kind of focus on something and really work on it. Exactly. But, you know, as you get older, it's a lot harder. You have so many other things that you have to do. You know, I have, like I said, I have my son, you know, I have my girlfriend. We have to find time to do things and go out and then I have work. And it's just there's a lot to try and balance it. I think that if we'd stuck with it in the beginning, then we could have carried it over and it could have been our full-time thing. But I think because we took a step away, and you know, I got proper jobs. We say proper jobs. I say proper jobs, but I probably would have been earning more money doing that if I stayed doing that than what I do now. You know, um, then yeah. But it's it's kind of hard to start something like that up at our ages, and the fact that there are so many people on it, like us four brothers, have to have the free time at the same time. Yeah, you know. Um, yeah, I feel I feel you on that. It, it's, you especially know, even voice acting. Yeah, especially in the the YouTube world now, everyone's trying to create a YouTube channel, and become the next YouTube sensation. So even nowadays, it's it's really hard to even get the momentum to grow a fan base. You know, even if the original yeah. fan base stuck around for all the years, you know, it'll still be you know a little bit tough to get their attention again and just get more eyes on the content in in and of itself. Also, you know? we. We all know how YouTube is today yes, as well. True. And that's another reason why everyone should get a Newgrounds account. Absolutely. Right? Yes. If you're not a oh, Newgrounds member, if you're not a supporter, then what's wrong with you? Jump go, on it, man. Go, go do it right now. 
<laughs> yeah, it's great. Friday Night Funkin' needs to have good service to be able to play it on Newgrounds. Okay, guys? They really... So you better go support it right now. It's... How much is it? Three, five dollars a month, Three dollars right? a month, twenty-five Three? for a Three? year. Right. If you want if you don't want to do the, the month, the month of uh three dollars per month, just pay twenty-five dollars and you'll be good for the year. <laughs> That's like a cheeseburger and like a steak or something like that from your most recent like restaurant. Just you know, just from on the side, throw it to the side and just, you know, subscribe just for a year. See if you like it, and I'm sure you will. And you'll continue and continue and continue. That's a good point. Before we uh, transition over to um, the next part of the podcast, there's one thing I wanted to do tonight, considering this is a voice acting uh, special, pretty much. We do have a skit from one of our uh, good buddies who's been a part of the show for, or who's been a guest on the show for quite some time. You guys know him and I love him. It's Johnny Guy. He put together a new Jack Sirius skit called Prick Juice. And I want to play that live tonight, have it be a nice little transition point as we get into the the next part of talking about the audio set or the audio skits that Nick and Josh have put together. So hold on a second. I'm going to go ahead and get this started up and enjoy the new Jack Sirius skit. Tired of being the same old nice guy that no girls want to be around. Want to be that jerk that gets all the girls and friends in the world. Get Brick Juice. From the makers of Haterade comes the essential product for jerkwads with quads. The new era has arrived, and it's only got room for people who drink prick juice. So if you're not a prick, then drink up. Cause that's the only way to get by in life is by running everyone over with a Lamborghini. How's that for Fast and Furious? This is Jimmy. Hi, I'm Jimmy. Jimmy's been drinking his milk and eating his veggies, but he's still a shrimpy, wimpy boy. Yes. Yes, I am. Can you guess what Jimmy's been doing wrong? Dying of an undiscovered medical condition that's caused me to have only one year left to live? Well, yeah, that, and I'm sorry to hear that, but uh, he isn't drinking prick juice. The only cure you need. The makers of Prick Juice did not write that in the script and do apologize for the insensitive and inaccurate statement from Jack Sirius. This is not a cure for any medical condition and should not be consumed by anyone with a serious medical condition at all, especially heart conditions since this is an energy drink and will most likely make that worse. Thank you for your consideration. Now let's return you to our advertisement. Give me that. Why, I feel like a new man. My arm is bigger than three babies. Prick juice, get some today. Is that the thing they're slinging on the streets these days? Uh, no, Grandpa Jenkins, I'm shooting a commercial. Have you been smoking the reefer? That's it. This ad only has room for people who drink prick juice. The makers of Prick Juice do not endorse violence against the elderly and should not be recreated by anyone. Jack Sirius is a stuntman who has taken it upon himself to knock over his own grandfather, who somehow wandered on the set and into the shot, away from his caretaker, therefore making a case settlement to include this notice in the advertisement, as paid for by the No Push Country for Old Men organization and preventing an unwarranted promotion for Life Alert, as Grandpa Jenkins could indeed get back up and is thankfully okay. Thank you for your consideration. Now let's return you to the advertisement. Oh, my cybernetic hip. How could you punch your own grandpa? No one asked him to be in the commercial. You really are a prick, Jack. That's it. I'm gonna strangle you. Jack Sirius is no longer our spokesperson as he does not reflect the views of anyone in Prick Juice Incorporated. As ironic as it is that he is indeed being a prick, our product name is not to be taken seriously. Again, we do not condone violence. Thank you for your consideration. This advertisement has been pulled from broadcasting everywhere and is now a part of this prick juice sensitivity training program you're watching right now. Now let's throw it back to your instructor. Thank you for watching. Welcome back, guys. Uh, we hope that you enjoyed the that new skit, Prick Juice, from Johnny Guy. Uh, we do love Johnny. He will always hold a special place in our hearts. Thank you for the, the skit, Johnny. You're the man. 
So as we um, as we continue the the episode, one of the things that we wanted to talk about is some of the uh, some of the audio skits that Nick and Josh have been putting together. Nick specifically a podcast, and Josh has been putting. I guess you can call it a, 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 an audio an audio series, pretty much like an audio drama series, if you want to call it that. Yeah. 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 So what I, that, yeah. what I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> so the first one I want to talk about is the open door policy from Mr. Nick Senny, him and his good buddy who he's mentioned already on the show, uh, Cyclone Breitmeier. Is that how you say his last name? Breitmeier? Yep. Yeah. Breitmeier. Breitmeier. Mm-hmm. And it's the two of them putting on a, a podcast of just whatever the hell they want to talk about. But one of the downsides of the podcast is the fact that it gets overtaken by – None other than Genghis Khan of all people. <laughs> so, before we go, uh, before we play a clip of uh, the first episode, Nick, do you want to talk just briefly about what the show, you know, how you came up with yeah. the idea of the show? Of course. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, me and Cyclone actually used to do, you know, obviously the radio in college. I became the manager, so I was kind of able to kind of do kind of whatever I wanted, in a sense. Obviously, with restrictions, trying to follow guidelines. But uh, one very special morning, there was an advertisement that came on to our, uh, our commercial playing that was a, uh, an advertisement for a Genghis Khan exhibit at the nearby museum. So after that point in time... Genghis just managed to come on to the show and just kind of talk a little bit here and there and just wanted to plug his uh, most recent uh, escapades at the nearby museum. And then he left and then, you know, he came back on the next time and then he left and came back on the next time, et cetera, et cetera. But it's been a couple of years since we had uh, our times together on the uh, on the show back then. That was that was uh, wake up with Cyclone and Senny. And that was late night with Cyclone and Senny. But this this is different. This is the Open Door Policy Podcast. So if any of you here happen to be either familiar with potentially Justin Roiland's very unfortunately short-lived, and I wish it was a little bit long, wish they were still doing it today, but the Grandma's Virginity Podcast. <laughs> I know very, that one. Very special podcast. Yes. That was very, very special to me, where uh, occasionally Justin would just bring on random characters that kind of just knocked on the door and just kind of walked right in. And he would do random voices and they have little skits together and then that would be it. And they'd, it's kind of, an, they're, they're, he's pretty much annoying Ryan Ridley and all the other individuals that were involved. But I, I, I found that particularly just perfect. And then I, I started to see, you know, there's a, specific, there's a specific movie that I've seen before where uh, it's involving, it's called Look Who's Back. It's a German movie. If anyone happens to be familiar, you can find it, I believe, on Netflix. And it involves Hitler coming back to life. <laughs> and I thought that that was a stellar idea. And seeing about how someone like a terrible individual, such as Hitler, Adolf Hitler, came into the real world in today's current society. So, uh, what would it be like if someone else came back today? Maybe Chinggis Khan? I don't know. Maybe. So, essentially, uh, we, we got some inspiration from those types of uh, shows. We've also found that the one show, Nirvana the Band the Show, is a very special show to our hearts as well, if you guys happen to be familiar with myself being kind of more of a, you know, a Matt and Cyclone being more of a J, his, the musical aspect and mine the vocal aspect. And we kind of work together to establish this, this type of podcast. So essentially, the, the premise of the show is that, and it's, 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 a, it's a fake show, right? It's not... <laughs> It's not, you, you, it's would not real, so. you would hope so. <laughs> you would hope so. Yeah, you would. You would hope it would be. You would hope it would be real, right? If it's like someone like uh, Chinggis Khan, like was real and was actually like murdering like people around me or anything like that. And I'm not, you know, not just saying that. Yeah, but so um, yeah, the, the the premise is essentially as we start out our normal podcast, he he just happens to come in and uh, and take over, and he kind of just you know like needs to get back into popularity. Genghis Khan's been gone for however many years, however many decades, and he just kind of wants to get that, that attention back after so long. And so, unfortunately, he found out about our little podcast through Facebook and, uh, and broke into our show and is now using it as a platform to gain popularity once again so that he can 
you know, I don't know, gain control of the entire world. And every single episode, we try to invite on guests or persuade Chingus to invite on guests that we could possibly use to, I don't know, allow us to escape <laughs> and get away from his, uh, his cold, hard, sweaty, hairy hands and his grasp. So I, I, I would appreciate it if you guys were to listen to it. And uh, it's a very special show, too, because... In my opinion, uh, I really love to do the sound design for it because it's not like it's not like real sound. It's, like, it's not like I'm bringing around like a microphone with us the entire time, and he's not like holding like a chain around me or anything like that. I I but I, I, add, I add in the sound design afterwards, uh, so that way it sa- it sounds like really real, right? Like you hear it in your left ear, you hear it in your right ear. It's almost as if it's like actually happening, but it's not. Um. So, uh, but anyway, uh, Corey, you can go ahead and um, you know, share about uh about this uh. This particular uh, beginning uh, part of the episode. Absolutely, man. Dude, it, At this point it, in time, let me just give a little bit of context. Yeah, go ahead. For the, go uh, ahead. Go ahead. I'll just give a little bit of context. At this point in time, Chingus has you know broken in, and now he's kind of explaining to us what he's intending on doing with our podcast and us. It was almost as if like I could uh, uh, thinking about it now. It's like I'm I'm reliving it, kind of like a like a trauma type scenario. But it's not. It, it's just. It's it's not again. It's not uh, real. But go ahead, Corey. I mean, did be, before we go, like, did it sounds like you also really hate the guy too? Like, do you have any like it, what? Oh no! Oh, oh, oh what? Uh, Chingus? No, he uh, he's uh, he's um he's he's uh, he's uh, you, you you can play the clip. Just play the clip. It's okay. We'll talk. Uh, just just play the clip. Okay, man. <laughs> All right. We'll talk about it later. Here, here, okay. here's, a, here's a clip from episode one of the Open Door Policy Podcast. Oh, thanks to you two, I'm going to be so popular. I'm going to be on the billboards, magazines, newspapers, movie posters, the big screen. People are going to make illegal copyrighted merchandise of me on Redbubble. I'm going to be huge. But, but, but first... I'm gonna have to use a little conqueror's room. Ooh, I have you two tied a little bit here. One, two, buckle your shoe. Uh, almost buckled mine. Luckily, you are not gagged. But don't think about doing any little funny business while I drain the chasm. Oh God, here it comes. Oh, 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 oh God, sick. Like, what are we gonna do? I don't know. Oh, thank God he went to the bathroom. What the fuck is a chasm? I don't know. We gotta. We, we gotta, gotta, gotta get out of here. We gotta undo these ties first. Do you have? Do you have, do you have something like? I'm a... not good with ties. I had my mom do them for me when I was in grade school and high school. Yeah, yeah, me too. In college. Uh, how, how do how do we get this off? <sighs> okay, God, get it off. Get it off. Um. Okay, I have a knife. I have a knife over there by by my nightstand. Just kind of, just, just, just shuffle over there if you okay, can. Okay, okay. All right, just get that. You got it in your hands, right? right? Okay, now shuffle over here. All right, now your ass, your ass is in my face. It's fine. I need you to just, do, okay, not that this is going to be weird or anything, but to get the best motion, just, just gyrate a little bit. What? Just gyrate a little bit. All right, that's working. Okay, all right, we're out. Okay, well, I am. Let me finish you off. All right, I think we're both good, right? Okay, I'm out, I'm out. Did your hands hurt? Are you okay? I'm good. A little bit too tight. Go with Tom's? I guess that's our best option here, right? All right, okay. okay. All right, this one. All right, my phone is like at like 2% battery. I was looking at iPhone shit. earlier. Shit! Well, how do you use your phone? Just throw yours over to me. Here, here you go. Fuck, I dropped it. What's the... Like, uh, no 911. One. Washing his hands, come on. All right. He washes his hands? Very <laughs> 911, what's your emergency? Hello, officer. Officer, I need your help. I need your help. Yes, sir. I have an emergency. What's your emergency? It's a bad emergency. Okay, sir, can you please describe the emergency? I'm sorry, I'm running well on time here, sir. Then why aren't you describing the emergency? Uh, okay, all right. So, are you familiar with Mongolian history? Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, dude. It, you guys, if just that little snippet is... It, it's a, a short bit of something that is truly majestic story-wise and comedy. The, the, the sound design is unbelievable oh, as well. It, like I said, say that, right? th- that's one of the reasons why I wanted Nick to help me with sound design on the voice acting collab, just because of how talented he is in constructing and building a scene in audio. Like he's easily like it's like it's like oh, like dude. it's so real, right? Yeah. Like it sounds it sounds real, right? Yeah, it 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 honestly sounded yeah, like Genghis Khan was <laughs> pissing like, in the other room. <laughs> like maybe. <laughs> The way you guys record that, uh, the show too, you guys do it, um, 
at your place, right? Is is that where you guys do it? Because in that episode, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Usually, it's uh, so I I live with my father yeah. currently. I'm in a uh, a little dingy uh, area. I've I've lived here since I was a kid. You know, there was a uh, a crib in this room, however many years ago, and uh, it's. We're just on a little, you know, little corner over here with a table, a little like folding picnic table, and we're just recording on our two little NT one A's, and that's just how we do it. And then, you know, occasionally if there's like special guests that come in, like uh, we got a guy from Craigslist to come in who was like a comedian. He, that's a good episode. Uh, he, was, he was okay. He was he was all right. He had some. Good uh, we jokes. had a guy who was a, a we had a guy. There was a guy. There was a video game developer who um he. He uh he he, did, he made a, a special uh ga- kind of uh, game like you might see one of those kind of games on like the uh, the new rounds like game portal or something you, you you'll hear about it when you watch the episode and then like you know we ended up actually having uh, a streamer on like you know like a professional streamer Ween. like uh, she's she's just a she's just a streamer right she doesn't <laughs> do anything else she's it, like a it's kind of like it's kind of like Twitch it's not Twitch <laughs> but it's like kind of like that you know like. You you could find other like you know cams online. Yeah. It's a she's a very talented girl. <laughs> she can do a lot of things. I'll tell you that much. She can do a lot, man. But um, well, she clearly didn't yeah, help. Really, you. I think you should listen to this. Yeah, she she didn't clearly God. help you guys out in in episode four though. <laughs> uh, I I like yeah. Like, uh, it, it's so funny though. Just like just throughout the premise of the entire show, you know, Genghis is just holding you guys against your will, and you guys are just trying to escape the entire time, and. He's just a fucking dickhead. Like, yeah, you know, it's I, I, I'm just surprised. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't. <laughs> he's yeah, he's uh, yeah, he's all right. he's all right. he's he's kind of yeah. I don't know. I I have some opinions about him, but we'll we'll get to that later. You have some opi- dude. He's an asshole. <laughs> you guys like, right? You yeah, make him out yeah. to be an <laughs> asshole in the show. <laughs> the guy's a dick. Like, yeah, he's a dick. No, he's 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 he, he's uh, he's all he's all right. he's all right. he's all right. He's fine, guys. Just he's I'll it's. He's, he's not, don't worry about it. He's fine. Okay, man. He's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll okay. take your word for it. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, make sure you guys go check out uh, episode one of the Open Door Policy. We're going to link that in the description of the show. Uh, the next one we're going to talk about is Josh's Space Quest. It is a story about two, uh, would you call them thieves, considering Friends. they still, thugs, considering they stole a, a ship. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it follows uh, Dante and Jay um, it, uh, along their space adventures, and they eventually get sucked into this big, massive cloud and transports them and transports them to this new area. They have no idea where the hell they are, and right. And Josh, I want I want you to go a little bit more into it because I know I'm kind of butchering it and kind of like meshing both episodes yeah. together real quick yeah, but um no yeah go <laughs> go go into detail more uh, go more into detail about uh, space quest how you came up with the idea and uh why you wanted to put it together yeah so um space quest follows two friends like you just said jay and dante and uh dante uh had this vision that there was something on the moon that was waiting for him uh and he just had this he just feels like he needs to go there. He needs to figure out what it says. He's had it his whole life. Uh, and Jay is like his best friend. And he decided that he wanted to, you know, tag along for just, just for the, uh, just for the adventure, you know? And the thing is, I feel like I came up with, I love sci-fi, you know, I think the, the turning point for me, when I really figured out that I really love sci-fi, I know a lot of people are probably like, Oh, you know, star Wars and stuff like that. But for me, it was mass effect. It's a lot of games, yeah. a lot of games that yeah. have influence on me. But Mass Effect, man, was just amazing. So that kind of, you know, when I started writing my own stuff, I wanted to start writing uh, sci-fi, which I love you. I love you. <laughs> I, love I love you too, baby. I love you. Which I, I love, love you. you. Just Aww. Just Aww. Out. Just out. <laughs> um, which I love because it gives you that whole, you know, you got the universe, you got the galaxies, you know, you, you can go wherever you want with it, you know. So when you're writing it, you're it's limitless what you can write about, you know. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, so I kind of wanted to go that way. So this, I've got, I've got episode one, episode two out right now. So they, uh, during their adventure to the moon, they have to, they stole a ship and on their way, there's this, this big, like, uh, Corey just said, this big, weird, dark space cloud thing that sucks them in and transports them to a place that's no, there's somewhere, but it's nowhere sort of thing. And, um, they wake up there, they kind of, 
I don't want to give. It's so hot. I like it's so hard I to know. describe it without it's giving like, the no. whole thing away. That's why you handed it over to me, wasn't it? <laughs> exactly. Um, I didn't want to give it all but, away. <laughs> but um, yeah, so we we actually have a clip from. So actually, sorry. So the first the first episode, I have Nick uh, voicing Jay. I voice Dante, and in the second episode, we actually introduce um, Corey's character, hey. Rayton, um, which. He, he when they wake up after entering this space cloud, uh, they wake up on their ship, but things aren't as as they seem. And Rayton is on there too, and he doesn't know how he got there. Um, so yeah, so it, it's it's like a mystery, a sci fi mystery thing. Uh, it's also an adventure, and I and I love adventures. Um, but yeah, well, I think we have a snippet here, don't we, from uh, episode two? Yeah, episode two um, of Space Quest, play, which kind of yeah, which is kind of a part of it, a part of a scene. Which I think you guys is this like maybe one of your favorite scenes? Yes, uh, in the whole thing with the te- yeah. Did you did you listen to it? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> same, yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'd I'd love you guys to just take a listen and um, hopefully you guys will you know will pull you guys in to watch both episodes. Um, but yeah, man, I, I'm just like a sweat box in this in this uh, sound booth right now. <laughs> and I'm half asleep, so it's kind of hard for me to explain. <laughs> God, yeah, bang the uh, bang the clip. <laughs> here, here it, bang it out. Here's a clip of episode two of Space Quest. Well, we can't wait here forever, Jay, and that is our only lead. You can't be serious right now. He's right. Come on, not you two. We have no choice. Whatever is keeping the oxygen levels up is through that opening. Exactly. Don't you want to find out what's going on here? Uh, I still don't think we should mess around with this. Um, yeah. until we weigh out our options. <laughs> Ah, okay, Jay. Let's think this through. But then we decide. Would that make you happy? Oh, yes! Thank you, man. So, uh, uh, what is that? He's brave, that one. He distracted us so that he could put himself first in case anything happens. (laughs) I put my money on that idiot tripping on that wrench there and falling through. I don't know how he survived this long. Come on, let's go get him. I'm gonna stick my head through first to see if I can see him. God, Jesus ah. fucking Christ, Jay! What? Oh, you frightened the shit out of me, dude. Your fucking face came out right where I was gonna put my face. Oh, uh, sorry. You were very brave for stepping through first, Jay. My first impression of you was not a brave one. I am impressed. Yeah, I am pretty impressive, aren't I? (laughs) I totally didn't step on that wrench and fall through or anything. I fucking knew it. I told you. I knew. I know him. I know him. I know what he's like. I I just looked at the fucking scene and I knew that fucker tripped on the wrench and went through. All right, shut up. Shut up, Dante. Uh, shut up josh <laughs> shut up the back and forth between I jay and dante up, is so, so good, good. Like, that that's one of the the things i love a lot about just the first two episodes of space quest is just the back and forth between jay and dante uh <laughs> they, did did you specify whether they're brothers or are they just friends in, in the in they're, the story they're, they're close friends from childhood okay. i haven't specified it very yet very close but friends I, right yeah. josh yeah very <laughs> close friends and then, yeah, I mean, you just tagged the. I don't think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's my I'm friend. T- I'm t- I think the best. I think the. Be- I think the great thing about it is that you know, in episode one, uh, I I knew just from hearing your previous work that this character. I wrote this character to be great for you, and I kind of let you kind of have your own kind of way with it, and you went in the, exactly the right direction, the direction that I wanted him to be in. You know, and I think that. I'm kind of glad that it's my project that I've got you to do that character on because he's like mine now. <laughs> you can't use that character anywhere else. <laughs> That's just Jay. He's like a little like whiny bitch. Yeah, yeah, but me. I love it. I love it though. You play him so well. And the best thing about it is that you don't have to act. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I can, just make, I can just be me. No, nice. little insecure me. <laughs> but yeah, and obviously Corey's voice. I had to get. I had to. Oh god, I love that voice so much. The voice that's just like yeah. almost <gasps> snake. He's almost you. there, but it's just yeah. It's great. It's so deep, and it's a voice. It's a range that I can't get to, and you know, I don't know about about uh, Nick, but I know that. 
Corey's voice just gets so deep and plays a very serious character, and I, I love it. I love it. I, I don't know yeah. what it is, but like whenever, yeah, like whenever I play a serious character or just military, the first is instinct I have is just to drop my voice extremely low. Or, right. I, or if I just, you know, I'm playing a card. Yeah, you know, the, if I play a cartoon, it just jumps super high. I don't, I don't know why, but that's just how it goes. But I, I <laughs> when I heard the first episode, I, I fell in love with the series right away because, you know, this was, you know, the first time I've seen it, Josh, your attempt at writing and sound design. And seeing you succeed the way you did with it, I was like, fuck yeah, that's exactly what I want my fellow friends, my fellow voice actors to do. I want them to put something out there. I want them to try something new and I want them to succeed at it. So when oh, you oh. when you asked me to be a part of episode two, I'm like, fuck yeah, dude. This is so awesome. I get to work with my buddies again. This is awesome. I can't wait to see what Josh does all together just with the story itself and just to see how he's able to piece everything together sound design wise. It, right. Yeah. Th- th- it's Thanks, one, yeah. It's one of the reasons why I wanted to get this uh, I wanted to get a snippet of Space Quest on the show just so people can get ears on it and go and listen to the first two episodes because you have put a lot of time and effort into writing and producing. And same thing with Nick. Nick is like, fuck, over the top with ODP. And, and right? <laughs> that, that's why I wanted to promote these, like give, give the show's plugs because just the hard work and effort you guys have put into uh, your work uh, just to make it something that is pretty pretty extraordinary in my opinion it's that's it, it's that's some... something sorry that's something i want to say is that um if you do get into doing voice acting i think that going and learning sound design uh is a must because that Absolutely. would just give you such a boost even to just you know because you can just create your own stuff and put it out there for people to see mm-hmm. create your own demos it just gives you such an advantage over people that, that can only really do voices you know there's so much more to it yeah than just the voice and also writing you should definitely definitely take your hand and try writing your own stuff not not to say like if you don't get something if you don't get a role that you wouldn't like get that that you have to do things yourself but like if you feel as though you aren't being appreciated for the talent that you are then show them wrong show them that you deserve the position that you should be getting absolutely that way if you're showing your creativity you're showing your experience you're showing your willingness to put yourself out there that's what they're going to be looking for and then hopefully over time you'll gain the audience that truly appreciates what you do. And I'm hoping that they do that for you, Josh. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, Thanks. Yeah. It, it's all, it's all valid points. It's, it's all good information. You know, one of the things that, you know, I, I like to talk about too, whenever it comes to voice acting, no matter what you do, if you're putting yourself out there and you're trying and you end up failing, don't take it as fuck, man, I suck. I'm, I'm the worst voice actor of all time. I should give up on this. Don't take it that way. Let it fuel you to be a better voice actor. You know, like I said earlier, in voice acting, one of the things that you constantly have to do is audition, 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 audition. Voice acting is a career of failures. It's just like baseball. Baseball is a game of failure. If you fail seven out of ten times, you're considered a great player. If you fail nine out of ten times as a voice actor, you can still be considered a great voice actor, you know? I, I, I'm I'm trying to think like think of a uh, who would be I I can't think of one specific voice actor in general but if you land a, a pivotal role it, it can be the role that you are stuck with for the rest of your Bill Farmer the voice of Goofy the guy's been Goofy for like what nearly thirty years he could have right. auditioned for like one thousand different roles and failed nine hundred and ninety nine or de- got denied for nine hundred and ninety nine. But Disney heard his impression of Goofy. Boom! Now he's the the voice of Goofy for the next thirty years. It, Bro, it's like you you're only going to hear the successes. Yes, you, know? you don't. Yeah. You're never going to hear when they fail. So yeah, and and don't take the failures as a negative thing. It let it feel you, let it help you grow and become a better voice actor. That's one of the things that I I I've used the second time around. When I audition for something and I see I don't get it, I listen to who got it, and I'm like, oh wow, yeah, they were better. Their delivery was way better. Oh, definitely. That voice actually sounds way better than than the one that I put together. And then there's some times, <laughs> very <laughs> rare, where you're like, there's, you're there's like, there's other times. Like, ah, they could have gone with somebody better, but I see their point. But that's very, very rare. The majority of the time, if somebody gets chosen over you, you hear it, you're like, 
Oh fuck yeah, that that's that's why that's why they chose them over me, and that's one hundred percent better. What am I gonna do it's, next yeah, time? Yeah, to, I mean, to be that person, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, in the beginning, it is it is easy easy to be sour over these things, but I mean, <laughs> yeah. you, you mature as a voice actor. Yes. Um, and you realize that you know this is uh, it's competitive, and you will have other people that that are just either naturally going to be better than you or they've put more time and effort in, you know, and they've, they've, they've been doing it for longer. Um, but yeah, you should never put yourself down. I mean, it is, it's easy to say, don't put yourself down. It's easy to say that because it's, because you, you fall into it all the time. It, it does happen. But like I said, when you have a great community, when you find a few people like Nick and Corey, for me, if I feel like a bit down, like, oh, man, you know, these guys will bring me up, you know, or I'll show them my audition and they'll be like, yeah, look, this is, and they'll always give you honest answers. They won't be like, yeah. oh, yeah, that other guy sucks, you know. You should have got it. They'll be like, oh, you know, your accent's a little bit off. They help me with my American accent yes. a lot. <laughs> I usually run it through these guys before I put it out anywhere so they can pick me up on things, you know, that yeah. I don't hear. It, my American accent sounds perfect to me. But as soon as I give it to you guys, you're like, well, I don't even know what language this is. <laughs> <laughs> the same can be said when I do my British accent. Like I run it by you and you're like, yeah, hey, that, that, that's pretty good then, mate. But uh, the, 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 there's Vendor. some things that just aren't quite there. <laughs> yeah, but that, that, that's, that's one of the things that I love is, yeah, that, that's one of the things that I, I love about, you know, just our, our, our group in general is building us up and helping each other get to that next level. And, and uh, one other thing I just kind of want to mention real yeah. quick, and I, someone in the chat mentioned it earlier about like, hey, uh, is, like, is internet voice acting a good way to establish yourself or maybe even particularly something like Newgrounds? I would say absolutely, yeah. because you're establishing not only just yourself, but a community and a networking with other individuals who are like-minded like yourself. Yep. I like know one other person that does voice acting in my life in my real life, but I would have never met you guys had I not gone online, you know, interacted with the Newgrounds community or just other individuals online through like Twitter or whatnot, Instagram. Oh, you have to have that network of individuals that continues to push you to be your best, because if you don't have that, then you might just, you know, think that, oh, I'm a failure. I'm not going to be any anybody special. But if you had those individuals there to help you out throughout the process or, you know, promote you a bit or just kind of push you to be a little bit better and, you know, and not let you just kind of beat yourself up, then that's that's what you need in order to really, you know, potentially make it one day. But the, behind behind every successful voice actor is a very very close-hearted friend in my opinion. Absolutely. And I got two very good ones. <laughs> <laughs> lucky, lucky you. Lucky me. Because I don't. <laughs> <laughs> you take that back, you son of a bitch. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I, I think this is a, a good place to end the podcast. There are a couple so of I, things I, I just want to plug real quick, if you don't mind. Yeah, go uh, ahead. One go of them ahead, being ahead. a new series I'm intending on continuing to release on Newgrounds. It's called Cutouts. It's kind of like, imagine Angela Anaconda or like the old like MTV cartoons or like jib jab type style where you're using an actual face and actual real images. So I'm actually not like the best animator at all in literally any sense. It's hardly even animation. I'm just using like tweens. In essence, I'm just kind of trying to establish the importance of voice acting and sound design in a given cartoon. Sometimes it's put on the back burner, so it might not be of the best quality or maybe people just don't care that much and they don't put a whole lot of effort into it basically i'll kind of be giving voice actors the opportunity to be seen kind of front and center as opposed to being on the sidelines or behind the scenes because i'll be using their actual faces in the cartoons but also their voice acting is going to really stand out as well as the sound design because the animation of itself is relatively simple the other thing i want to plug is puke bomb it's a series of cartoons that you've probably seen on newgrounds thus far yoshi commits a capital offense got a daily a while back then they released the president cartoon and then most recently, they've released Dr. Schmuck in a disgusting display of extreme medical malpractice that just got the daily of fourth place. I'll be doing the voice acting and the sound design while Septic Sebi and Nato Sumi are doing the animation. Both of them kind of have like, you know, like distinct styles to them. For example, like Seb's kind of like gross and like scratchy, but still does like traditional animation with like smear frames. He actually was involved with a lot of the different Newgrounds meetups and actually was even on Tom's bowling team one time. And he actually took an animation class alongside Sir Lenward, if you're familiar. And on the other side is Nato Sumi, who has like his own brand of expressive minimalism is what he calls it. He has a very unique way of shading things too, which is like kind of my like most favorite part about it. He was actually commissioned to do the artwork for Sam Hyde's How to Bomb the U.S. Government, if you happen to, you know, like know that book, which is kind of a big deal. And in terms of writing for the cartoons, Broson does a phenomenal job. 
His like wacky, goofy, off the walls, out of the box ideas and scenarios fit perfectly for the style we're going for. And then the last thing I was gonna plug is Nintendo High. It's a cartoon series based around the entirety of the Nintendo franchise, but in high school, as you can probably expect. But like, don't shoot it down immediately as some like side fan project. This thing has like put a lot of work into it. My friend Joe is the one that's making it, and he's on Instagram right now as smash.fanman. He has 9,000 followers right now, and he's focusing on releasing anything around like Nintendo updates or like releases or like memes, but he really wants to do this as a passion project. And his writing is awesome because he's like a huge Nintendo fan, the biggest one I know. So he sprinkles in a bunch of references throughout the entire script. But man, the artwork is out of this world. The guy that does the artwork is on Instagram as Joseph Amaro, A-M-A-R-O, 25. And he has stunning visuals. The character design is perfect. It fits exactly what you would have thought that Nintendo characters would have looked like in high school, and that much more. The backgrounds and visuals have like so much to them that it's like a blink and you'll miss it type scenario. So like literally keep your eyes open. And I'm bringing this up because I'm actually voicing Mario throughout the entire series, but it's not like your stereotypical like, hello, like kind of voice. It's just like my voice because we're trying to establish like new personalities for these characters. So that way we're allowing the voice actors to really put themselves into the role. And I would be amiss in not mentioning that Cyclone Breitmeyer writes, performs, and produces the music throughout the entirety of the cartoon. His musical style in combination with his appreciation for the entirety of the Super Mario franchise makes for the perfect soundtrack for the series. But that's that's pretty much everything I wanted to plug. So thank you for the time. Absolutely, man. All right. Well, I I think this is a good uh, a good spot to wrap up for for the evening. Uh, I do want to thank my guest Nick and Josh for coming on and talking voice acting, plugging your shows because it has been one hell of a good time for me because I got to hang out with my buddies and chat with them for pretty much the first time for a significant amount of time. And oh, I love yeah. I love you guys and. <laughs> This has been one hell of a thing. But before we go, um, Nick, I, I just want to make sure, dude, because you, you were kind of hesitant. You, you were kind of hesitant about the whole Genghis Khan thing. Oh, fuck. Um, and uh, we, we know he's a dick. Dude. We know he's a dick. But you were just, like, really hesitant to even talk shit about him. So, like, are you willing to just, like, what are your true thoughts about the guy, dude? Uh, are you sure? Like, uh, you really want to know what I think about um uh, yes. uh, him? Yes, I do. Right, like, uh, Please. Uh, Chinggis yeah, uh, uh, Khan. Uh, right, he's like, a dick. Uh, <laughs> like no holding yes. back. Uh, yeah, right. No holding back. Uh, uh, all right. Um, uh, don't don't repeat this anywhere. But uh, oh, okay. he's um we're not. He he's a stuck up, uh, self entitled loser <laughs> who thinks he runs the show. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> well, he's a, he's been. an ancient fear mongering Mongolian emperor. All right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, well, well. Where did that get him? Right. Uh, buried. Who who knows where? It covered with horse shit because because he is horse shit. He can't read. <laughs> he can't write. He 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 doesn't even know what tape is. He he's always cutting me off, making everything about him, and he's preventing me from from living my dreams. And he keeps killing my friends. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he's a Mongolian mongoloid. That's what he is. Send me. Whoa, Are dude. you talking behind my <laughs> hairy back? Whoa, dude, dude. What? Are, no. Nick, what the uh, fuck is going on, dude? I would, I would never. Why do you think you're so special? You can't even get on a pod dude, bean is cast is there? without all of your little notes and ideas hey, and scenarios. I need to be funny. If I were to be on the newlywed pod bean, I'd do one plus times better than you. Uh, oh, yeah? Nick, w well, prove you okay? it. Hey, the little red light on your compooper is blinking. You're on right now. Dude, 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 no, 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 I feel like that was like part our, our fault, kind of. Oh shit, it's gone. That dude, he... where the fuck is Nick? He's... Dude, what the? 
Oh, fuck. What's going on, dude? I don't know. Dude, he's not even he's not even in the chat anymore. What's going on? I feel like wait, let me have a look. Hang on. I don't know. I don't know, man. Oi, listen, I feel like I feel like we maybe shouldn't have asked him how he felt. He he seemed a bit he seemed a bit weird about us asking him that. Do you think? Do uh, Did we just get him fucking killed? Uh Guys, thanks for uh, joining the the New Grounds podcast tonight. You guys have been great. Um, uh, thank you, Josh, for coming on to the show. Um, we'll, we'll try to get in touch with Nick. And, um, yeah, thanks for tuning in tonight. And uh, I'll try him on Snapchat. I'll see if he's in there or something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, have a good night, everyone. See ya. Thank you for listening to the New Grounds podcast. This show is recorded live on our Discord server. Join us at bit.ly slash NGP Discord. For the latest news, follow us on Twitter at the NG Podcast. Thank you to Waterflame for the use of his song, Gabberfly. Goodbye. <laughs>